Some types of software get all of the love, all of the attention in the world because everyone uses it or it's big and flashy, like a new web browser. A new web browser comes along, it's news everywhere. A new office suite comes out. That's a pretty big deal because everyone needs some form of an office suite or uh, some sort of big AAA video game title comes along. Oh, shout it from the mountaintops. But there are some very key pieces of software that certain platforms have been seriously lacking for a very long time and have been a major roadblock to adoption of those operating systems in certain industries. Case in point, Linux, right? Linux is amazing. Linux has had wide adoption in a wide variety of areas. But interestingly enough, despite its engineeringiness of Linux, right? Despite the nerdiness of it, Using Linux in computer-aided drafting scenarios, mechanical engineering, um, architectural engineering and drafting, those sorts of things, ha they hasn't really taken a strong hold. You've seen, you see individuals who are kind of Linux users make it work, but realistically, most of those people use other platforms because the right software simply wasn't available at a good enough quality. We've had some computer-aided drafting, some CAD software available for Linux and and the BSDs and whatnot for quite some time, but it's always been missing a lot of features. None of them have been ready for prime time. None have been have been ready to take on the the big options that are out there. And and so we really lacked uh, a certain adoption in those areas. Just to give you an example, I used to work for uh, Hewlett Packard. And one of my jobs at Hewlett Packard was to service these old Apollo Unix workstations. And these Apollo Unix workstations were being used at companies like Boeing and, and other aircraft engineers because of the, the CAD and drafting and engineering software available on them. The engineers liked them and they were really good at those CAD tasks. So for a good CAD workstation, man, it was really, for at least for a period of time, it was hard to beat a good old school Unix workstation, right? And so we, we used to do everything we could to keep these no longer produced ancient, dusty, crusty Apollo workstations running because there wasn't a good Windows or Mac option. Linux just wasn't even viable at that point. This was back in the 90s. And and it just we, we did everything we could to keep these long dead pieces of hardware churning to keep those rusty spinning disks working because the engineers needed Needed it. Well, now here we are in 2024 and Linux is an incredible system along with FreeBSD and OpenBSD and everything else. They're powerful systems, but they've still been lacking that CAD. But now FreeCAD, a long existing and long developed open source free software, computer aided drafting software is about to hit the 1.0 release. And this has been coming for years. And this has been under careful, slow, methodical development to get things really right. And FreeCAD 1.0 is uh, is in release candidate right now. Uh, it came out on uh, September 10th, so about six days ago. Uh, quote, we've just published the builds uh, builds of the first release candidate for FreeCAD 1.0. You can download them here. So far, we've enjoyed the contributions of users who are happy to be living on the edge with our weekly builds and reporting whatever bugs they run into. Uh, that really helped us make the proverbial edge less edgy. The intention behind making release candidates is to give them into the hands of a different demographic, users who usually stay away from unstable software, yet are happy enough to try very nearly complete software and Report the issues they come back with. We are currently down to just seven release blockers, but we expect that the release candidates will bump that number up a tad, and that's a good thing. We, while we desperately want 1.0 out, delivering a really stable release is a big deal for us. So you can grab the uh, the first uh, release candidate now. It's uh, if you go to uh, freecad.org. You'll find links there to where you can download the release candidate. It's also up on GitHub. It's available for Windows, for Mac OS, uh, and for Linux. And it, it looks actually pretty phenomenal. This looks like it could be the first CAD that we've seen that could make a significant dent in the 
ah, I would use Linux, but I need better CAD software demographic, which is significant for a lot of companies. Now it's not gonna, it's, if you're in uh, mechanical and architectural engineering and you take a look at FreeCAD, I'd wager to say a large percentage of you are still gonna come away with, there are features missing. They've added a ton in this, but there, there's always a long way to go. If you ask, ask anyone who uses CAD software, they have strong opinions, right? It, engineers who use CAD software are just like software developers with their programming language. They've got strong opinions about why they use the software they use, which by the way, they hate the software that they use, but they hate the other options more. Right. That's that's just how that sort of thing works. It's like it's like a C developer looking at C plus plus or Rust or or whatever language they're like. They, they hate they have a thousand things they hate about their language, but they hate the other ones more. That's just just the way it is. But the the free CAD 1.0 did a lot to to bridge that gap, to to make possible the things that were previously either impossible or just too annoying to want to work around. Uh, long, the long-standing topological naming problem has finally been addressed, uh, if that means anything to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to go into all the details on that. You can read the release notes for uh, 1.0 at wiki.freecad.org if you want to get into the details. FreeCAD has a new built-in assembly workbench, bench, um, uh, which looks fantastic. Uh, it has a new logo. I had a ton of user interface changes that were necessary to make it more usable in a wide variety of environments and to make it a little bit easier to use in some areas. Uh, it's it's really it's really a fantastic looking setup. So whether you're using this for you know modeling of 3D objects to print out on a 3D printer or doing actual like architectural or or uh, or mechanical engineering with this, FreeCAD is looking to be actually viable now. Uh, that that's been something that's been sorely lacking in Linux for gosh a long time, but it's looking really viable for a larger percentage of of CAD users. It's it's not going to be there for everyone. But the fact that it's going to be there for a lot more, it makes this possibly the most important release for of of any piece of software for Linux of the year. And it, again, it's not it's not something that most of us are going to need. Most of us may not even ever even download this thing, right? I mean, sure, we can grab it for Windows, Linux, and Mac. We can grab the binaries and we can use it right now, and and that's great. But how many of us are working on drafting uh, the blueprints for a home? How many of us are working on uh, a, a, a set of mechanical objects with all sorts of gears and whatnot and actually engineering that? Most of us aren't. But for those of us who are, this is helps to take away yet one more reason why you need to keep a Windows machine around or keep a, a Unix workstation machine around. Linux becomes a more viable option at that point. And realistically, realistically, this helps on the Mac side as well uh, because it's it's available for Mac and it gives, gives Mac users yet another uh, CAD option, quality CAD option, which is, I think is a pretty fantastic thing. So this is a big deal in terms of Linux adoption, and it may not get a ton of press. Like you may see all sorts of, of announcements between now and the end of this year about new versions of web browsers and new distro updates. And right, well, like uh, next month, we'll see a brand new version of Ubuntu, which will get a ton of press. But will that new version of Ubuntu do anything specific that helps to bring more people into Linux that otherwise couldn't have used Linux before, right? Help, what will it have done that made it so, oh, they fixed an issue that makes it so that I couldn't currently use Linux? Will Ubuntu uh, 24.10, which comes out next month, do that for anyone? Probably not. It might be better than the current Ubuntu. It may be good for users. It may generate a good amount of press, but it won't actually solve those big key problems. FreeCAD 1.0, more than any piece of software I've seen in the last year, is a release that could potentially do that, at least for a not tiny, a significant enough portion of the the engineering market. 
And that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. So congratulations to the free CAD engineers. Uh, it does look like a fantastic release. This is extraordinarily worthwhile. I hope that people take note of it. I hope that that engineers will see this and give it a try. Um, it may not solve all their needs. There may be one or two issues um, that don't quite fit with their particular workflow. So it may there may still be a CAD blocking issue from moving over to Linux for them. But I think for a lot of engineers, it is going to work, at least as certainly after a little bit of learning curve, which is very, very cool. That is the whole reason that I'm I'm making this episode to help get that word out because this is this is great to give to give more engineers the ability to move between platforms i think is a is a huge win is a is a really really huge win all right so again congratulations to the free uh the free cad folks uh freecad.org awesome awesome good job and with that ladies and gentlemen boys and girls nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes i do declare and broadcast <laughs>